Good morning, class. I'm Professor Shalem Cotton, here with a gamer to give you a lesson on engravings for dummies in Lost Ark. What even are engravings? Do I really need them? I'm so glad you asked. Engravings are essentially just extra buffs to your character. While you might not technically need to equip these buffs straight away, they will become essential in the endgame grind from level 50 and beyond. You first get introduced to engravings in Lost Ark around level 26, when you get the Road to Faceting quest. And then you never use this mechanic again, because what the heck am I even looking at? Don't panic, once you get past all the nodes and percentages, you'll have engravings down easy as pie. Alright, so there are basically three types of engravings. You got engravings for damage boosts, utility buffs, and class engravings. The catch is that any engraving item also comes with a debuff engraving, which can offset the usefulness of an engraving item. As you can guess, damage boost and utility buff engravings are universal effects, while your class engravings are going to be specific to your class. For instance, as a shadow hunter, I can choose between demonic impulse or perfect suppression engravings. The class engraving you choose mostly depends on your playstyle, and depending on the class engraving you choose to focus on, you'll want to pick other engravings based around that class build. So for example, if I'm going for a Demonic Impulse build, I know that Grudge and Raid Captain are some good recommended engravings, so those are a few of the engravings I might focus on. There are also three different ways to get engravings. Ability stones, equipping jewelry, and engraving books. You'll start collecting ability stones primarily from endgame activities like Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids, Abyssal Dungeons, etc. You can purchase them from the Auction House once you've unlocked it too. Jewelry and engraving books also mostly come from endgame activities, but engraving books can also be found as rewards from island quests. If you bring an ability stone to the stone cutter in any major city, represented by this blue crystal icon on your map, you can see what two engravings and what debuff is automatically bound to that stone. Before you can equip an ability stone, you'll need to facet it with the stone cutter. This whole process seems kind of confusing at first, but it's actually just a game of probability. When you start the faceting, you'll see the current success rate. This indicates the probability that when you click the hammer button, this will successfully fill one of these columns of nodes. If probability is on your side, you'll fill a node in the engraving you picked. If you failed, the node will crack, but your success rate should go back up a notch. It helps to know which of the two engravings you want more. Basically, if the current success rate percentage is high, take a crack at the better engraving. If the success rate is super low, take a crack at the debuff or reduced ability. The idea is that you want to fill as many blue nodes and the least amount of red nodes. Depending on your success, you'll end up with an ability stone with a set amount of nodes added to the two bonus engravings and the one debuff engraving. So for example, after faceting this stone, I got four nodes in Keen Blunt Weapon, six in Spirit Absorption, but also four nodes into Defense Reduction. Oof. Once you have a faceted ability stone with a combo of engravings you like, you can open your character profile or hit P and equip your stone to the slot right below your jewelry. Unlike ability stones, jewelry cannot be manipulated to improve the buffs and debuffs automatically bound to them. You'll collect these as you complete endgame activities, and if you hover over them in your inventory, you can see what engravings and debuffs come with them. However, you cannot equip more than one jewelry of the same exact name. So, if you already have a twisted elemental earring, it can only be replaced with another of the same name. You cannot have two equipped at the same time. To equip jewelry, it's as simple as opening your character profile, aka pressing P, and equipping them in the correct slots. So, for instance, I just got this new twisted magic necklace from a chaos dungeon. It comes with one node into explosive expert, and two into contender. I already have a bunch of nodes in Contender from my Ability Stone, so when I equip this, my Contender engraving is now level 2. Nice. Lastly, we have engraving books. There are two kinds you'll find, combat bonuses and class bonuses. Learning engravings from engraving books unlocks engraving abilities that you can slot in your character profile on the left side beneath your gear. How do you unlock these abilities, you ask? by simply reading the books. Now slow down, before you go on a bookbender, I want you to open your engraving effects window or Alt-I. 
This is where you can see all of your locked and unlocked craving abilities. You'll see that the grayed out ones say zero out of 20 beneath each icon. This indicates the number of recipes you need to read before you can unlock the first tier of this ability. So for instance, maybe I want to equip the keen blunt weapon engraving to my character. To start, I'll need to read 20 of the uncommon or green keen blunt weapon engraving recipes. Once I've done that, the rank of the engraving effect will have increased. Equipping this ability will now add three nodes to my keen blunt weapon engraving stat in the engraving tab of my profile. If I want to upgrade this engraving ability, I'll need to start learning rare or blue engraving recipes to progress and next epic recipes and lastly legendary recipes. You can stack the same engraving ability twice, however, for some extra nodes. The grand idea here is to choose which engravings are best suited for your class and your playstyle. You might see that a lot of folks favor Grudge and Curse Doll for engravings at the start of Endgame, but if you're just starting out, we recommend focusing on your class engravings first. If you need some ideas on what class engravings to choose from, check out our Complete Lost Art Guide by Harry Alston, linked in the description for some class overviews and class build recommendations. Once you hit item level 1370, you'll have access to better items with more engraving points, and you can really get into the nitty gritty. And you'll need to when you start doing abyss raids. So for a list of the most popular combat and utility engravings, check out the original article by Harry Alston linked in the description. Once you've figured out what engravings are best for you, the goal is to use ability stones, jewelry, and engraving books collectively to stack as many nodes into your chosen effect as possible. The higher the level of your engraving, the better the benefits from that effect. Simple as that. I hope this helped you wade through the basics of engravings. I also hope you have a number two pencil on hand because there will be a pop quiz. For more tips and guides on Lost Ark, be sure to check out thegamer.com.